Hello and welcome to the DSP Project. I'm your host Rupert Brown. Um, today is a very special episode for me personally because I'll be answering my first viewer submitted email. It comes from Philip and he basically writes and says that he's recently purchased live and an APC40 and he's written in with two very good questions. Um, he writes, is there any way to custom limit the faders of the APC? What I mean is this, in live I want to be able to flick the faders all the way up and at the same time I want the fader volume in Ableton to stop at let's say minus 12 dB. In other words, I want the full range of the hardware fader should only regulate the software mixer from uh, minus infinity up to minus 12 dB. I believe the overall, overall sound will be better if I manage to keep the channel faders constantly low to avoid digital overdrive. Yes, uh, it will definitely sound better and there's absolutely no reason whatsoever that you, um, you need to push things into digital overdrive. Um, you can always turn them up at the output stage when, uh, when playing. Um, so, and yes, there is an answer to that question. I will get to that. I just want to read the second question, which is, Assuming while playing live, I want to avoid using the cursor buttons on the APC as much as possible, which means I have all the important sounds on the first eight tracks, and I wish to keep uh, same or like elements on the same track in all songs, e.g. kick drum on one track, hats on another on track two, uh, etc. What is the best possible way to access different instruments from one track? I heard it is possible to have several, several instrument racks on one track and have specific clips address any specific instrument rack. Now, this is um, doable and it is a very, very good question. I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to showing you guys how this is done. So let's get into it. I want to cover the second question first, which was putting multiple MIDI instruments inside of one MIDI track. So to do this, I'm going to start by dragging in an instrument rack. And now I'm going to, let's, let's call this uh, kicks, because in Philip's example, he spoke about kicks on track one. So let's do that. Um, and we're going to do a use the drum rack, which makes sense, because we've got some kicks already in here. And I'm just going to just grab some at random. Um, now what we're going to do is we're going to hit the uh, chain list here, so we can see there's our 808 kick, and we want to the chain list lets us put in multiple uh, instruments in parallel with each other. So let's say the DMC kick and uh, whatever the 808 kick tubed. So we've now got um, we've got three kicks, but the problem is see it all overloading here. Um, the problem is we're, we're triggering all three at once when when we send in a MIDI note. So what, how do we get around this? Well, I'll start by quickly just putting in a simple pattern. Um, so it's just, just you know, whatever. So. Great. So there's our uh, there's our uh, exciting kick pattern. And what we're going to do now, talking about selecting the different units, what we need to use is the chain selector, which is we use this button here to to pop it out. Now, it's, they're not easy to see, but there's actually little uh, little blue bars here hiding in the side. Um, and I want to drag them all out, so I'm going to push Command A or Control A on PC. And I'm going to drag them out to the full length of the 127 bars. I'm going to right click and select Distribute Ranges Evenly. Now, what the chain selector does is allow us to select which chains we're using at, at any given time. So, if I... Um, so you can hear we just get the 808 kick as I as I drag the selector over. We get the DMC kick, and there's our tubed kick. So uh, it's quite cool the chain selector. You can map that to a knob, and let's say you might have a few different synths in there, and to be able to just dial around to a, a, a different synth for a different song, and still have keep the same volume fader for um, for for all the instruments inside of this one channel. Okay, so now the question is, how do we tell the clips uh, where to be on the chain selector? Well, the answer is envelopes. So I'm going to duplicate this, um, this uh, lovely pattern three times, and I'm going to jump over here, and I'm going to hit E here, which opens up our envelopes. Uh, I'll just hide the help text. Now, because I was just playing with the um, chain selector, Ableton Live realizes that and it's showing me the envelope for the chain selector. So under instrument rack, chain selector. Um, so this is the envelope for the chain selector. Now, 
Um, for the first pattern at zero, that will actually be on the right. That will actually be on the right instrument that we want to we want to use because uh, if we click, we flick over here, we we want the 808 kick first, and so zero is that one. So the next one, the DMC kick, we want to be somewhere in this range here. So let's say about 48. So I jump back over to my envelopes, select the second clip, and drag the envelope up to about 48. And hit the next clip. And there we have it. It's, it's now launching. If we jump back over to our chain selector, you can see this little orange dot shows us where the envelope is. Um, so it's inside this next bar and so for the third one our tube kicked we want to get to uh, 88 or over so I select the third clip uh, come down to I'm just using the scroll wheel to come down to here which is our envelope again and we're going to just drag this right on up oh, 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 oh. there we go and in theory if we play that there we go we've now got our third sound and there you have it and so now we can trigger any one of these clips will in turn change the chain selector and play only that instrument okay so Philip's first question which was regarding volume faders how do we limit the maximum uh, software values and still have the full hardware travel if you look if I push these faders up to the top you'll see that they go right to the very very top which is uh, about positive 6 so that is not a good idea that's if pushing things to positive 6 dB is going to end up with uh, clipping and something sounding terrible so how do we get around this um, it's very, quite simple actually, we just need to manually map the faders. So we select the MIDI assign button, now we select the volume channel, and then we move the first fader. Live makes the connection and maps the two, and we have a list of all our mappings on the left, so we can select the uh, minimum maximum, select maximum, hit minus t 12, enter and uh, we'll do the second one as well, select the track channel, move the second fader, live maps it, we select the maximum value, highlight it, enter, minus 12, enter. Push, take the mini mapping mode off. Now if we slam the faders up, you'll see they only go to minus 12 dB. No matter how excited and uh, crazy ninja frenzy you go, uh, you won't overload the system and it should hopefully still sound good. So there you have it, that's how to manually control the max volume on your live faders and also how to use multiple instrument racks inside of one MIDI track. I hope that answers your questions Philip. If you have a question and you'd like me to help you out with it, feel free to send me an email to inbox at thedspproject.com. Otherwise you can head down to our website thedspproject.com, there you can leave a comment under this message. If you think that there's a better way to do this then please write it there and then we can all learn. Uh, and while you're at the website you, can, website, you can also subscribe and get all the fresh episodes delivered to you. That's all I've got time for today. Join me next time where we will be talking about something else.